Welcome back to Real Repairs for Real Customers. Some time ago, I documented a restoration of a dash on a 72 Firebird. I really enjoyed doing it and thought you would enjoy seeing it. So let's jump right in. So I've set the dash down into this box, just trying to give myself a little bit of stability here. It looks like the owner has tried to use drywall compound to fill this in. So we'll have our work cut out for us. And to cut it out, I've decided to use the hot tip of my plastic welder. Then all this dry, crumbly foam will have to be dug out. So here we've done that and cleaned it up a little bit more. So here I've added a piece of structural foam and sprayed some contact cement getting ready for my next layer of foam. And here is that layer. And I put a little bit of super glue along the edges just to keep everything buttoned down good. So the foam doesn't fill it all the way to the top. It leaves a little bit of room here for some epoxy. And just like constructing some forms for concrete, I'm building some forms here for the epoxy. And so whether you have the epoxy in tubes or in a cartridge, make sure to warm it up ahead of time. So for the first application, I'm happy just to bring it up to level. If you've ever had epoxy peeling on you while you're trying to sand it, you know the importance of really, really rough sanding the plastic at this point. Even gouging it with a saw blade if you need to, to get a rough surface for proper adhesion of the epoxy. Then of course you can be quite aggressive in sanding this first leveling layer out. That way this next layer has something to bite into really well. So now you can see we're building it up where we've got our basic structure. Now we just need to resurface, refine this surface, and we're going to use this flexible polyester filler, similar to a flexible type of Bondo. You can use 100 grit at first and then feather with 220. This feathers extremely well, and especially so if put over a rough sanded surface. Wiping on a bit of color will help you to see what you have so far. To get this border ridge line contoured just right, I found the best tool for that happened to be a jigsaw blade. We're getting close, but this corner is lacking the proper geometry. We can't build the corner all at once with this material, so we'll have to be patient and put several applications. And on this application, we'll also consider the underside of the dash, which we've neglected up till now. Now it's starting to take shape. This has been a lot of fun working on this corner, getting the sculpting just right. And as before, a bit of color reveals our progress or lack of it. Looking pretty good. The front lip of the dash facing the windshield is visible from the windshield side. So we have to take time to build that up and reinforce that. This flex text is a heavy bodied solvent which when sprayed with a preval pretty much duplicates this fine hair cell design of the factory dash and that's why I chose to use it here. It's important to spray it at a distance of about a foot or 18 inches away with the preval and don't put it on wet. It needs to be pebbly and sprayed almost dry. After you've built it up a bit I like to sand it with 400 grit and then spray one more 
light pebbly coat. Now, of course, it's time for color. I'm using a water-based polymer plastic primer as a base and uh, adding my pigments to that. I'm also adding a bit of flex additive to this as well as a little bit of flattener so it's not shiny. And that's about it. On this particular car, it is so vital that the dash be an OEM dash in good condition to go to the car show. They are very rare, and when you do find one, they're very expensive. So the owner was very happy to see this one looking like brand new. So this guy was going to invite his friend along, who was hard of hearing. So he said, would you like to go with me? I'm going to the car show. His friend said, you're going to what? Car show. Gesundheit. I don't care who you are, that's funny right there. <laughs>